I got to go to this lecture. This is Laji Vincent, Assistant Professor, School of Computing Science and Engineering, Media University. And uh, I have completed my Master's in Computer Science. And I am doing, um, doing my research. And I have nearly seven years of in the, uh, like education experience and two years of industrial experience. This is a small uh, introduction about myself. So today we are going to see a, a video lecture on introduction to HTML5. So before going to what is HTML5, we need to see what is World Wide Web. So this World Wide Web was originally one of the systems for organizing the internet-based information. So at the beginning of this concept of www, we actually gathered information, put it in one place, and we tried to access. That was the initiating point for internet. And the distinctive feature of web is the support for hypertext, that is text containing the links. So communication will happen by means of the protocol HTTP, that is hypertext transfer protocol. And uh, document registration is done by HTML. So I will clearly explain how this thing works. So I have my information, my, it might be files, it might be images or videos or any other uh, resource which can be kept on one computer and if I want to access it from another computer so I need to connect them physically and after that I need to make the systems communicate with each other and when they do the communication on the uh, uh, client side I need to show the information that is being accessed. So the collection of information is called as www and to create the interconnectivity between two systems we use TCP IP protocol physical contact is being made and the protocol that is being used for communication as I told you it's TCP IP and to carry information from server to the client we use a protocol called as HTTP so which will carry the information. So you can compare this uh, working with a normal telephone. So telephones work similar, similarly to this uh, pattern where you make a call you know, and the other end the person picks up the call, a connection is established, then the data is being transferred and when the call is uh, over you terminate the call. So you can compare this working of, uh, with the working of internet. So the web is actually a collection of machines, right? web servers on the internet that provide information, particularly HTML documents via HTTP. And this web server is the one which provides all the information that we need. So request has to be given only to this um, web server so that in, uh, information whatever we require will be sent back to the client. So there might be millions of requests coming to our server daily. Uh, so we have to have a, 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 a very powerful web server to handle all the requests that comes daily. Imagine uh, how much request comes to a Gmail server. So daily we may uh, we may have millions of requests coming in. So we need to have a suitable web server to handle all these requests and respond to the client. And machines that access information on the web are called as web clients. As I told you, there are two things: one is web server, and another one is web client. The one who provides information is the web server, and one who accesses is called as the web client. And there's another small Thing to remember that is a web browser it's a software that is being used by the end user to access the web now we have so many advanced uh, browsers 
we use Firefox, we use Chrome, we use uh, Safari, all these are different kinds of web servers, we, uh, not web, sorry, web browser that we use to access the information. So now browsers make our life pretty easy, uh, like it accesses the page and displays according to our requirement. And if you want some addition functionalities, you can put the plugins and you can get the functionality done. And HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Now, the word hypertext is very, very important here. Now, when you say a word as a hypertext, so it has some special meaning. So, I am trying to link one with the other. That's the base concept of hypertext markup language. So, by means of tags, I am trying to create a connectivity between different web pages. So, linking of different pages is, uh, is being done by hyperlinks. And hypertext is nothing but it's a specialized text. So, HTML files are basically special text files which contain special control sequences or tags that control how the text is to be formatted. Now, when you display some information to the user, will it be good to see a plain web page or a web page which is more colorful and more interactive with the user? So you will always prefer the second one. So this HTML will help you to make your page look more colorful and more presentable rather than a normal plain web page. So HTML files are the source code for web browsers. So it's where the web browsers get the information and display it on the screen. So a browser reads the HTML file and tries to display it using the tags to control the layout. And this particular HTML file can be created by any of the editors like Notepad, Notepad++ or uh, any, uh, like, uh, any of the editors which you are using in our day-to-day -day, uh, lives, you can use it for creating the HTML uh, files. So we have some special HTML editors uh, which are freeware also and um, something expensive also is there like Dreamweaver. Next is we need to see the HTML versions. So initially we had HTML 2.0 which was introduced in the year 1995. Then we went on to 3.2 which was introduced in the year 1997 which was a W3C recommendation. So W3C recommendation, W3C stands for World Wide Web Consortium. So it is one organization which decides on the standards that needs to be introduced in the web technology. So they only decide how these technologies should be and what are the guidelines uh, for this are the given the guidelines are, are, are introduced by this W3C uh, consortium. Uh, so this, it was a recommendation of I don't know, this uh, W3C uh, the 3.2 version. Then we went in for HTML 4.0, which was introduced in the year 1997 and 1998. And then we went for uh, a version HTML 4.01, which was introduced in the year 1999. And finally, now we are using a version that is HTML 5, which was introduced in the year 2014. Now, how to create a HTML? So HTML files have HTML or HTM extension. So when you type in the HTML program and when you want to save it, you have to either save it as .html or it has to be .htm. So my preference is you always save it with .html. We will see why it is. The older systems such as Windows 3.1 and DOS could not understand four letter ex file extensions. So Anyone creating web pages on those systems use .htm as the extension. So that was the reason why HTM was used. But what I say, my preference is always save it with HTML to avoid 
promise.html will be the preferable extension to be used. So in any case, because the first three letters of .html and .htm are the same, those systems simply ignore the I and recognize the file type without any problem. So that was the reason we had it before. And some web servers are case sensitive. So this, uh, uh, so the, uh, so remember this when naming and referring the file names and trying to be consistent. So either use it as HTML or use it as HTML. If you have file name as mypage.html and then reference it later using mypage.html that is if you see the thing I am using a small m here and earlier I have used the capital M. You may end up with a broken link because the file name is different. So one unique thing about this particular HTML as I told you uh, is uh, it, it, it recognizes HTML and HTM as same extensions but still as I told you avoid using HTML. One good technique is to use the uppercase or lowercase to your file names. So you can either only use uppercase or lowercase so that you might not end up in any confusion. This way if you see a file with a letter in it that doesn't match, you know instantly that the file is probably the problem. So if the just the <coughs> with the view uh, of the uh, by viewing the file with the letter in it which doesn't match, you will understand that the file name is the problem. That's why your output is not reflected in the web browser. Uh, so uh, next thing is that uh, thing is that even the pros run into the case sensitive problem on almost daily basis. So you have to be very careful while using the letters. Whether it might be uppercase or lowercase, you have to be using it sensibly. And you always use simple file names with only letters and numbers. Don't use spaces, punctuation or special characters 